Bruins are not this bad. Why can't we beat the fucking Devils? Hey man, everyone's going through a lot. All the COVID stuff going on, like, you never know how your team's gonna perform through all that. Oh, come on, enough with that. Every team has to deal with COVID. We all have our struggles with it. There's no excuse. Look, some teams are really involved. They have therapists. They uh, make sure the families are communicated with really well. I mean, what are you guys doing? How are you handling it? Well, um... Better? Nope. Fuck it, just give me the bottle. You know, in, in, in a healthy way. All quality fans of the high quality Bruins team. Welcome back. Well, what are you asking me to say about this game? Well, honestly, what do you want to know? What do you want to know? It was a 1-0 loss to the New Jersey Devils again. I have this thing I do. I have this thing where when we don't score the first goal, I say out loud every time, well, we're not going to get shut out. And 99% of the time, I'm right. Usually we don't get shut out. I never feel bad. I know statistically you give up the first goal, it's you're usually not going to win the game. But I never feel that bad about giving up the first goal because it's always in my head going... We're not going to get shut out. This year, I go into the game thinking we're going to get shut out. I believe it from the puck drop. I'm trying to think of who scores for us and no names coming up. The only names that come up are on the perfection line, but they look gassed all the time. By the way, Bergey played 20 minutes last night. We've been holding his minutes back. 20 is a huge jump. He's been sitting around 16 to 17. Fuck, Pasta played 23. Halak started this game. He looked great. He looked great. Kuhlman, in for Wags. Yay! Bleed, in for McKegg. Okay, I don't know why, but sure. I actually really like McKegg. Am I the only one that likes Kegger? Coyle's 600th game. You wouldn't be able to tell that because you couldn't see him. Let's talk about the game. All right, that was the first period. On to the second. No, just kidding. Puck drops. And we seem to start on time this game, which I guess is a bad sign at this point. The period itself is mostly uneventful. We do get a power play chance. We don't do a lot with it. We get three shots on net, but th there's movement now. Now, there is more movement, but no one has any finish on this team, on this forsaken team. With three minutes left in the period, it's just a reminder that we are cursed against the Devils. A lucky bounce. That's, that's really all it is. Devils get some sustained pressure in our zone. Ty Smith shoots through a crowd of bodies. It bounces off Palmieri and past Halak. Halak gets caught moving the other way. There's nothing he can really do about that. It's a lucky bounce. It goes in the back of the net. There's three minutes left in the period. They're up 1-0. And I, I'm going to read you. I'm going to read verbatim the note I made at the end of this period. It's 1-0. All right, you ready for the note? Going into the second down 1-0. But this is not the same team that was sinking since February. They look focused. They're finding space. They're forechecking hard. This is the Bruins that beat Buffalo and went to OT against the Islanders. This is a good sign. If every single one of you now unsubscribe and just delete YouTube in general because you know I'm on it, I'm not blaming you. I'm not. I must be a moron. I should actually go take a test to find out if maybe, just maybe, I need a little bit of help in life. Because what? But that is what I saw out of the first period. They were engaged, and they were finding actual space. I was re-watching some of the uh, 2011 Cup run before the game. Another bad thing to do. And I was amazed at how the team would sustain pressure at times and find space. They would pass to open places, not people, but places, and people would get there. Something I haven't seen from this team all year. But that first period, there was actually pockets of it that that is what I saw. Oh, I felt so good. I didn't feel bad about not having the lead at all. I went, that is a team that will score this game. Second period starts. Freddy starts with Coyle and Sinitian. Bjork gets bumped up to work with Pasta and Bergie. 
You know, Freddie was starting on that line last game. He is out of place on that line, unfortunately. He just can't play at the level of IQ that those guys have yet. That is nothing to say about him as a as a player, as, a, as his character as a person. He needs to grow more. That's fine. He's not ready for a first line. He'll probably never be ready for a first line. The first 10 minutes of this period, we are getting shellacked. We have no offensive time at all. The Devils are running us out of the building. Eight minutes left in the period. Cliffy to the box. We kill it. Two minutes left in the period. Grizz to the box. We kill it. Between those penalties, Bergey went down the tunnel. He did come back. I'm not really sure what happened there, but he's okay. Here's the fun part about the second, and many of you have probably already seen Jack Edwards' take on it. My take is similar. Spoiler alert. Sednika, with 18 seconds left in the period, gets tripped up, and it gets called. It gets called. Here's the thing. During this power play, Krejci gets blatantly tripped. And I mean, if you want to talk textbook trip, the guy's stick is between his feet. It pulls. He trips. Textbook. They're the only two in that section of the ice. It's so obvious. But because we're on a power play, no call. This game, if you were in fifth grade and you had to do a diorama, do you remember those where you would take a shoebox and you would build out like a little little structure? This is the game you would play out in your little diorama to show how fucking awful the referees have been this year. And again, it's not just us. It's not just us. The Devils get boned. We get boned. Every team in the league right now is looking at referees like, I'm sorry, what are you doing? I have no clue what's going on. I'm not someone who likes to blame the refs. I think everyone has their turn of getting boned. But they're blatantly not calling things. It's like they're mad at players and fans for calling them out on their bullshit. So now they're just going to purposely get crap wrong? This video is going to be way too long for a 1-0 game. I'm telling you that right now. Bergey comes back for the third. And it is a miracle over the first six minutes that we don't score a goal. We're all over them. We turned on the switch. I hate that. I want to see the team turn the switch on. I need 60 minutes, guys. Or 40? Can I get 40? Actually, you know what? Give me 20. If we're going to shit on the refs, might as well. McAvoy gets blatantly high stick, is bleeding on the ice, and they do not call it. They wait until play is stopped because he's down. They check him out, see he's bleeding, and then, because you can review these when there's blood on the ice, then they go back and call the penalty. They weren't going to call anything. <laughs> oh my god, I'm losing my mind. What does happen, though, is we get a four-minute power play. And three minutes into this power play, that's right, we're just going to skip three minutes into it because nothing happens. Three minutes into the power play... Krejci, from a bad angle, has a wide open net, and he decides to try to pass to Richie, who is double covered in the slot. <laughs> His team! <laughs> Around 14 seconds left of that power play, we take a tripping call that prevents a shorthanded bid. We kill off that penalty. It's fine. 143 left in the game. Bergy wins a faceoff in the neutral zone. Halak screams to the net. And all of a sudden, we got our six guys in the zone pounding away. Pasta shot from his office. Bergy tips it on net. Bounces as Blackwood goes down to cover the puck. Krejci comes in, gets his stick underneath his glove, and pokes the puck away before he's able to cover it. It bounces to Bergy. Bergy sends it into the empty net. It's a tie game. New Jersey challenges it which I thought was dumb. Honestly, that call goes either way all the time. Goaltender interference calls. No one fucking knows. No one fucking knows. You know and I know anytime there's a goaltender interference claim, anytime there's a review, it's a 50-50. It's flip a coin. I'm starting to think Toronto does that. They just flip a coin. And they're like, I don't care. I don't care about the video. Flip a coin. So they wave that off. And then this happens. With two seconds left of the clock. Puck doesn't cross the line. And we, uh, we lose 1-0. Even if they allowed one of those goals, we didn't deserve to win that game against the New Jersey Devils. This team is downright embarrassing right now. My biggest issue, and I feel like I keep saying this, the game was too easy for Blackwood. He could see everything. The only net presence we have is usually Richie. And Richie sits just to the left of whatever goalie is in net. 
And you'll see it all the time on power plays because he's looking there to clean stuff up. I need someone to stand in front of the goalie. Please, why does the goalie get to see every shot? And we keep proving over and over again that if they can see it, they got to stop it because no one on our team can beat a goalie outright except for two players. One of them wasn't in that game. If we can't beat a goalie outright, and we refuse to get in the dirty areas to score, then this team will do nothing in the playoffs if they make it. Five games against a New Jersey Devils team that is at the bottom of our division, and we have scored zero five-on-five goals. None. I believe that's back-to-back -back shutouts, too, for them against us. Different goalies, but back-to-back -back shutouts. They had 12 giveaways that game. We couldn't score. 12. You ever wonder how Halak or Rask enter the locker room after a loss like that? Or really any game at all in the past couple months? Do they, do, I, w I would love, I would love it if, if Halak just walked into that room, looked around, and went, Hey, thanks for the help, assholes. He gets the loss. Like, what kind of shit is that? I held them to one goal, and it was a total fluke accident bullshit. And you're going to tell me you couldn't put one in against the New Jersey Devils? I just wonder if he walks in that room and just goes, fuck you guys. I'm done. I'm done with this shit. Put Danny Vladar in. He, I get no help, ever. The pressure to be perfect is insane. I'd have middle fingers up that whole game. The whole game. My teammates would not be happy with me. Look, if I'm a goalie and I'm walking in the locker room after a point nine six six, and we lost, yeah, I'm looking around the room being like, fuck you guys. What, what do you want me to do? How about, how about this? Here's an idea. How about I make a save, we switch sticks, I'll skate down and fucking score. How about that? Does, is that what you need? Is that what you need me to do? Do you want me to try the offensive stuff too and hopefully get back in time to do the defensive? Ass. Oh, I'd be livid. Bjork looked good. Halak looked good. Seneshin can fly. I love him. I want him to stay on the team. Krejci actually looked pretty good this game. Except for that one decision that was stupid. And I am now officially on team need a winger. I just, I can't keep watching this team have, have no offensive ability at all. It's just killing me. Anyway, that'll do it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Looking forward to a better showing on Tuesday. Like, subscribe, comment, all that junk. And uh, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Go Bees!